All right, good morning. So uh, this morning I just wanted to start off with something a little, I guess, fun and exploratory that we can do as a group. So uh, what we're going to do in the first session this morning is we're going to rebuild the Google homepage. So we're going to just have someone come up and build the top, have someone come up and build the middle, and then have someone come up and build the bottom. All right, so it's going to reinforce a lot of things we went over yesterday, you know, styling forms and uh, text inputs, making these buttons, and as well as doing the, you know, the floats at the bottom and everything. And um, that way we can just review it as a group and have a little fun in, in building something that's, you know, live and out there on the web so that you can start uh, reinforcing your confidence that you can build these sites. No. Uh, no, if you can do it, go for it. <laughs> All right, so first, uh, just to get us set up with it. Uh, you can put, what I'm going to do right here is just put a folder titled Google, Google, and then we'll work in that folder. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so like, I mean, if you want to, cre like, so creating this new Google um, folder right here, it would be at, you know, rbonhart.github.io dash Google. Is that what you mean? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, you can do folders within. Yeah. Well, you can have index.html within a different, a different folder. Yes, if I, yeah. I mean, you can do, you can have multiple, you know, pages, sites, different looks within there. All right, so, yep, yeah, that's true, sorry. <laughs> I need tape up here, box. So who wants to be, who wants to be our first volunteer to do that top section? Someone out here, you want to get it started off? Bring it. There you go, Julian. <laughs> nah, you're good. And then uh, just, you know, try to exp explain to them, you know, as, as you're going, why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, just in that Google folder. We're in it, you're already in there. I created a document for you. Okay. All right, so I just saved it as index.html. And remember uh, to use that Emmet shortcut to get all this code here. Uh, you know, you have to save the file first. So that's why I saved it first, and now I did the Emmet. And he's just getting it organized now, I like it. Yeah, so um, 
one of the beautiful things is that, and that I like these types of exercises because it shows you that there's um, a lot of different ways to, you know, achieve the same result. So Google has done it with absolute positioning. Remember, we did absolute um, at the end of the day yesterday, and uh, I think Julian, you're going to do it through float, right? Um, yeah. So and then Julian's going to do it through floating, you know, the list to the right. Correct. Yet, Correct. No changes yet. So, link to the style sheet there. They're both in the same folder, both in that Google folder, so we didn't have to go anywhere. He just told him, you know, told the browser look for style.css. All right, so I'm kind of a person who really enjoys semantics. It's uh, one of the many blessings I got to learn in comp class this semester. Um, so, You do however you want it, man. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, if you uh, when you're working, if you hold, you actually have to be out of that on there. But when you're working, if you can just hold a com uh, command and use that trackpad to zoom into there, so they can see. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, just zoom in there so they can see it while you're typing. Uh, oh yeah. All right, so so we got uh, like he said, he just wants to be uh, you know he's sticking with semantics hard here, so he's putting it in the header. He likes to put it in the nav, and then he's got an unordered list with seven list items. So the idea for seven is one for the plus lion, one for. And what's good about list items is that you can just apply tag and around them. So instead of having a single list, having them all in line with bands or links or something like that, and then having to adjust the, uh, the space in between each word, which you can actually just do in CSS, uh, command say it again would make more sense if you just did that instead of just a single uh, inline element. If you push uh, tab, yeah. or enter. Tricky. Disorganized. 
There you go. Background image. See it? You can right click on that. Oh. Hey, just go ahead and put words there. The whole point is. Well, uh, without going into s too complex of stuff, Google used something other than an image, we'll say. Um, so he's, we're just going to uh, do the symbols for it as well. Excuse me? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I've always just done the plus sign. Uh, we could go into, uh, you know, can I use and, and check that out. What? Let's see. Uh, plus, plus, let's do what? Uh, just do, um, just do uh, support for plus signs or HTML or something. For now, it'll work. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I'm just going to stick with the plus sign method. Um, otherwise, the other tools are kind of easy now. You can just use a plus and just do a little yeah. method for each category. Um, so, we have our seven list items, uh, which kind of relate to the base. So, we have apps and has a list of apps, which tells us what's the title of the app. We have tags and descriptions, we have a little text tag unit. <laughs> hey, you never got, uh, I don't see him today, to play yesterday. Oh, you did? All right, here, we'll just do this. Is that good? OK, perfect. All right, so considering we have uh, quite a few navs here, um, for the sake of wanting to have to reuse them, what we can actually do is, since we know that they're all going to be in kind of like um, a row, we can simply state that, and this might be a little bit of tricky magic here, um, but we want our lists. Go ahead. Oh, I wasn't going to use. I wasn't going to use flags. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Let's actually go ahead and uh, open this in the browser. Okay. So here's what we have so far as our uh, our little list. And um, one note, real quick. Remember yesterday when I told you that usually. Unordered list show with bullets. See, we don't have the CSS reset in right now um, because we haven't done it. So that's why uh, you see us uh, showing the bullets versus yesterday. Um, our reset changed it to zero list style or no, no list style, so you didn't see the bullets yet. Do you want me to put the reset in? Or? Uh, How many okay. different list styles are there? It's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> So the one thing that I'm really looking for right here is a header. There are some elements that will um, natively stretch the entire width of the page. 
Uh, header's one, div is another, figure's another one, typically any kind of block element that you'll see. Uh, so header stretches the entire width, which is uh, what we actually want. So nav is pretty much just there semantically. Uh, it really serves no other purpose. It's just a block element. Uh, and we have our unordered list, which makes each list item in here have a bullet. And we can actually get rid of that by saying that ul list style none. And when we come back, our list items no longer have the uh, bullets in front of them. And from here now, So what I did is I want each list, <coughs> list item to display in a row. And how we can do that is because considering list items are considered block elements in this case, uh, they require a new line in them just natively, even though you don't really see them there. Uh, in order to get them actually side by side, we do inline blocks. So they keep the block property, which means that nothing can really be suited uh, on top or beneath it. Uh, however, we can get them all now into a single line. Uh, that's a good question. Um, um, I'm not too sure to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't really mess with tables okay. yeah. at all. I keep it um, in container tables. Um, for the most part, we're more popular like back before we had more advanced layout options. So uh, that's another good question. You so can, you can so take that. Like he was saying, this kind of goes with what we were talking about yesterday in terms of, um, he was saying like, uh, he said it really well actually in the, the words I was trying to use yesterday is um, when you have, okay, so when you have um, inline block, it still retains the block properties in the sense that, um, how did you just say it a second ago about the vertical? You just said it really well. Oh, vertical line or? Oh, nothing can be suited on top or below it. Su okay, yeah. So yeah, suited on top. Remember yesterday when I was telling you how we need, we couldn't do it inline, we had to make sure it was inline block because it was like the padding wasn't working, like it was pushing up against the top of the screen. So with inline block, you still maintain the block properties where you can do the padding and stuff like that. And it doesn't, like if it's just inline, then it'll wrap or it'll, it'll, it'll suit, like it'll sit on top of each other. I, I like the way he used those words. Like nothing can be suited on top of it. Remember I was showing you with the line height, if you make the line height small enough that inline elements can wrap, like vertically wrap basically, like lay on top of each other. Um, that's one of the, the benefits of the inline block. So it still maintains the block property. Another thing too is inline, uh, inline elements can't inherit minimum, maximum, or just standalone width. They don't inherit padding or margins. <coughs> so if you actually had a span, you can assign that span as an inline block. And that's kind of like how GitHub does it for, um, for their markdown is when you see like the like the code block and it has like the padding around it is because they rearrange it to be an inline block. That way that anything inside of that can have padding. But otherwise an inline element will ignore padding, margin, width, and height. It will just wrap around the text itself. So a couple things actually I'm gonna go ahead. A couple things, um, go back to that. I, um, I, this is good um, practice to go through because um, you get to see kind of some of the things that the, the reset does for us. So like right now, if you was to uh, hover over body uh, or HTML, yeah, it is body. Yeah, see body, um, see how there's naturally by just the browser itself has that margin of eight pixels. So yesterday we didn't have that at all because we used that, that reset. So it's, it, it sets everything you know, to how exactly you want it and uh, across all browsers. So that's the joy or uh, the benefit of that, that reset there. Mm
Uh, take the padding off of it. You know what? Yeah. Uh, for both. Let's see. Well. Aha! I'm a genius. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> unordered lists also have that same kind of uh, margin. I guess I could have just looked in here and made my life so much easier. Um, so, uh, unordered lists uh, typically will have that margin there. And if I took this out. So the unordered list has uh, 16 on the top and bottom, and then it has this padding on the left side of the 40. And um, actually, kind of don't want either of them. So what we can do is just the margin zero. Oh, do the uh, reset. Okay. And so for this one, <coughs> typically is uh, what you'll want to do is actually set the padding on the uh, list elements themselves instead of the unordered list. Um, typically, this can be very good in um, cases where you have an anchor tag where you want the, uh, the clickable region for a link to expand to the entire uh, area that it's in. That's one way that you could do it. Otherwise, we can actually just leave the padding because it looks like uh, they have their own kind of padding and their clickable area is simply just on the text, uh, which is probably what I'll just go ahead and stick with anyway. So refreshing it now. That's what he was talking about again, how we styled the list yesterday. Yeah. Um, uh, this is great that actually you weren't here yesterday. This works out perfect. So <laughs> um, remember when we did the inline block with the list yesterday um, and um, we did the padding on the anchor tags? Remember that? And that way we made sure that when we scrolled over it, if we wanted it to have a nice shading um, when we scrolled over it, that's what he was talking about where you do the padding within the anchor tags. Um, within the list item. That way it, it has that good aesthetic look when you scroll over it if you wanted to, to give that hover effect. Kind of hover over it a bit. Cool. All right, so to make the touch target bigger, right? yeah. Yeah. And then we want to add the padding. So, you, with the, so with the block model, there's content, there's padding, and there's the border, then there's the margin. So we've got padding, border, margin to choose from. And when you do border block, box size and border box, box size and border box, that means that the, the just trying to make sure this is out loud. Um, I mean, it does, unless the box is, you know, ex given an explicit width. Does that make sense? Like, if you don't give, uh, if you don't give the element an explicit width, then that still changes the. Okay. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. So generally, though, to make the touch target the, the, the right size, you would set the padding. Yeah, oh, and solely for this is solely for like when you go to a site and you know you hover over like the nav at the section at the top. And so like if you go to Google right here um, and we hover over, all that happens is it becomes underlined, right? Yeah, yeah. But you've seen those sites where the nav, like actually go to my site, go to ryanbarnhart.com. Um, you can go in, get your ID. Or that map, map site out of it there, but I'll just, I don't have this. <laughs> um, but okay, notice how this has a full underline. Um, if, if that was colored in at all, if it was shaded, it would be the full width and the full height of yeah. that of yeah. that link. And that's yeah. because we did the padding on that within yeah. the within the link itself, the not the list item. The line that comes up on the bottom is border on the bottom, right? Yep, so border on the bottom right. for that for that link. Yeah. So between the text and the border on the bottom, you got the padding. Yep. And then when the margin is in here, you push the pushy down to not touch the to push the touch. I mean, you could have done them. The yeah, you could have done them together. Like, you did it right. But you could have done, you know, like instead of four separate, you could.
should have just done color and border color because uh, originally originally there's no border you know and then since just uh, you know someone was playing with this yesterday since that border's there um, you know when we hover over it the border gives two pixels right so that adds to the to the height the border on the bottom gives two you know changes the two pixels so that adds to the height of the link so we change it also on whenever it's on hover um, that the padding goes down by two pixels because padding plus border has to do with the height so that's a little trick on there that's why okay so uh, What was it? Yeah, having the having the border is white. Oh yeah, good call. Yeah. She was saying uh, an easier way would just be have them have a border bottom of that white background before you scroll, and then just changing the border color when you scroll over. It's a good idea. And uh, one thing I did want to note is the, uh, the, the touch target is the entire container, not just the text, whereas for the uh, Google home page, it's uh, just the text here. Oops, not that one. Yeah, see, so as soon, there's no padding on these links, so as soon as you scroll off Gmail or Ryan, you know, the, uh, you no longer have a touch target, and it goes back to that default cursor. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. At one point, they, they actually did have the whole touch target. They had the, like the long black nav bar where they had everything stretched across. That was one time when they actually did, but yeah, that, was, that was years ago. OK. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, get back to this. So it looks like our padding here, for the most part, is, uh, is uh, not too different. So I kind of like that. And what we can do now is our nav, since the uh, header is the entire container. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and give this a class here, not this one. Yes. Thanks. Pause for one second. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. 